Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas. Got a 9 inch piece, a half inch round, and I'm going to show you how to make a ball end on a hanging hook. I'll show you how to make the whole hook, in fact. Let me get it hot and we'll start working with this. See you in a minute. First step is the top of a ball is not flat, the end of your bar is. bullnose that a little bit. Knock the sharp edges down. Starts cupping on you. Upset that end back a little bit. come back in stages and kind of create the most uh, convincing half of a ball that you can. The next step will be to offset that over the edge of the anvil. Make sure to drop it at least once. No, that's not a requirement. Ooh, whatever that is burning, it stinks. Anyway, you'll kind of see that I've rounded the tip of that off. Not perfect, but it'll suit for this demonstration. See, there's a little bit of a divot in the end. Yeah, that was already there. I lied. I did that. Anyway, we'll see you in a minute. All right, I'm gonna take a little straight bean I made, a little straight bean hammer. I'm gonna hang me some of this over the edge. <clears throat> you want it to kind of be a ball, so You don't want to hang too much over the edge or you end up with a jelly bean. Better to start with a jelly bean and one work back towards yourself and kind of isolate that piece of material into a ball. The whole reason I do ball ended hooks is because it's not nice to have a hole punched through so your best jacket when you hang it up. I find having a straight peen on hand is nice. Something that y'all might consider as a tool for that is a welder's chipping hammer. Those are readily available in most places in the world at your local hardware. And uh, keep your eye out for garage sales, flea markets, places where you might pick up these tools at a reasonable price. Especially if you're doing the blacksmithing on a dime thing.
don't have spring fullers and things like that. Anyway, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I've isolated this piece of thicker material. I'm creating a little fuller all the way around. I'm going to take another heat to get it where I want it, and then I'm going to taper this section out where the hook will be bent. See you in a minute. I'm going to be bold and I'm going to take this four pound old mason's block hammer and use it as a straight peen even though it has rather wide ends. You can do it with a carpenter's claw hammer as long as you're good with your aim. Careful not to hit your ball there. If you're a little too hasty and you hit your ball, it'll do some damage to your ball. You see what I got there? I've isolated that piece of material, almost like the head on a chest pond. So I'm going to draw this fat portion here out. Now that I can safely get away from my isolated material. See you in a minute. All right, we're gonna reduce the diameter of the shaft, the round stock coming back away from the ball. I like to do that on the square. Knock the corners down. need to use a four pound hammer for that. Kind of tease that ball back straight. Anyway, you see what I'm doing. When drawing, always go square, knock the corners down, go octagonal, and then round if you wish. See you in a minute. More refinements.
mean, you can go as delicate with that as you want to. I personally don't like super clean forging. Because it looks like something you buy at the hardware store. Why would you buy anything from a blacksmith if you could buy the same thing out of Chinese M ready made? That looks exactly the same. That's my personal take on it. I think it's nice to leave some evidence that the thing was handmade. Not only does it give it uh, more curb appeal, but gives it some nostalgia too. Got a ball in. This portion has been tapered. Before I do the curve on it, it's easier to grab a hold of this with some bolt jaws and go ahead and work on the, uh, the flat portion that's going to have the fasteners installed. So that's what I'm going to do next. Heat that up, flatten it out before I do the curve. See you in a minute. This is a good sized hook, so I'm making space for two fasteners. by the ball. Select me a portion to flatten out. Don't want it to be too ugly. this before in other videos but you can push and pull your hammer to move your metal out evenly in this case it's worth another mention Bear in mind it's going to be mounted flat against something. So try to keep it offset to one side or the other. Flatten that out. Made myself a place to punch a couple holes. See you in a minute. All right, I'm going to punch a couple of square holes. I'm going to use the device to hold the piece stationary while I get my holes marked and started with a good divot. You don't have to punch square holes. You can punch round ones. But I use square nails for my hardware, so the square hole kind of fits the bill.
show you what I did there. The end of my square punch has a rounded, kind of a center punch looking end. But I know I can find these holes when it's hot and I can't see them. I'm going to punch them out. I usually put my touch mark between the holes. But that's all just purely decorative and up to you. Let me get it hot and punch them out. See you in a minute. Now bear in mind the side you're punching from is going to be the eye teeth. The side you look at. The initial side you're punching from anyway. I'm going to take it over the Pritchell hole. Knock a big nasty slug out of the back. usually always stays half connected unless you do it precisely. Ah, broke off. Good. Of course, that's going to lip it in a little bit. Alright, we're punching holes. Be sure to keep your punching tools Cold. They'll move too with heat. Heat it back up. I'll show you what I did. See, I punched a square hole. You see how it lips in on the back. It's okay. We're going to run those through a little bit when we get done punching the other one. See you in a minute. Alright, let's knock the other hole in. I do a lot of this over the Pritchell hole. some of that lip on the back out. I like to use a punch that will fit through the hole. I can knock it through. <clears throat> Forgive me, I'm a little congested all the time. We're about done here, really. <clears throat> Couple of nice square holes put through. Knock the lip out the back there, down a little bit. This one. As long as it doesn't close back up too much to get your square nail through. Heat this up. I'm going to touch mark it, flip it over, and do the curve on the hook. And we'll see you in a minute. Alright, let's lay my mark upon it. that so people will know where it came from.
If you have a touch mark or a sign that uh, you made the thing, don't put it on anything that you wouldn't be proud for another person to have. Now I'll grip the flat end with my uh, flat jaw tongs, get it in there, heat up the portion to be bent, and we'll make our hook finish. Appreciate y'all sticking with me. Stay tuned for the end of the video. And uh, I'm going to share the names of a couple of blacksmiths. Two or three that you might want to go watch if you enjoy watching these smithing videos. Let's heat her up, finish this thing. See you in a minute. Alright, let's curl it over. Into the slack tub it goes. You got a ball ended hook. Two places to fasten it. I guarantee it'll hold any coat you hang on it. So you get the basic idea how to isolate your material, taper it back, do all the work you need to do punching and touch marking, then curl it over, cool it off. You can brush this, reheat it, put a coating of boiled linseed oil or a paste wax, whatever you want to use to finish your metal with just to keep it from rusting and being ugly. And anyway, it's kind of nice, huh? Little divot in the end. That's all right. Good demonstration nonetheless. You be the judge. So I want to take this opportunity to shout out a few blacksmiths. I like to do this uh, in my videos. Because uh, if you're watching mine, you obviously are enjoying watching forging videos. You might want to check these guys out. Uh, one is I want you to check out uh, Safety Third Forge. Uh, Dylan over there, he does some cool stuff. And uh, give him a sub. So when he does more cool stuff, you'll get to see it. You'll get notified. And uh, another smith I'd like to shout out is... Uh, First Degree Forge and Rockin' Blue Monkey. Kind of a cool name. And, uh, old boy kind of touched me a little bit. Uh, he knows I love forging railroad spikes into things, so he uh, made a railroad spike knife here recently. So uh, I suggest you go check that out. And, uh, he mentioned me. That's cool. I'm honored. Thank you, man. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to shout out uh, County Line Forge. Uh, Ting Ting over there is uh, doing some interesting things with the sword. And uh, a lot of other things. 
there's a lot of content on his channel that you might want to check out. He's a professional blacksmith. He does this for for his bread. And uh, he's a redneck with a hammer, kind of like me. And I respect the guy. So uh, give him a check out on his live streams especially because you'll get to see a lot of other blacksmiths uh, getting in there and commenting. And uh, you can check out their channels as well. I'll share the links to all three of these in the comment section below, but my work here is done for the night. Till next time, bye.